What's going on everybody? It is Justin and Nick back from Air Max and today we are doing our first of many NBA preview videos and the first team up is the Philadelphia 76ers. All right, Nick. So 2018-2019 season for the Sixers was eventful to say the least. They were coming off a season last year where they lost in the conference semis to the Boston Celtics, so the uh, Sixers were poised to improve upon that. The Sixers made a series of moves throughout the 2018-2019 season to get over that proverbial hump. They traded starters Robert, Robert Covington and Dario Sarge to the T-Wolves. They got Jimmy Butler. They traded four draft picks, promising young guys like Landry Shamit to the Clippers for Tobias Harris, Boban, and Mike Scott. All told, the Philadelphia 76ers finished with 51 wins and that same conference semifinals exit, this time to the Toronto Raptors. All right, so now we are on to 2019-2020. Now we're going to start with the uh, draft that happened. Uh, so here is the draft recap. We're going to go round one, pick 20. They got a shooting guard by the name of Matisse Thibel out of Washington, I believe. And then the second round, they picked 54th. They got another 2-3 and Mariel Shayouk. All right. Let's, let's break this down. How do we think the Philadelphia 76ers did in the draft? Thibel is regarded as the best defender in the draft. He's got a seven foot wingspan, despite being 6'5", and can defend most positions on the floor. His jumper needs work, and he doesn't have a three point shot, but he can make free throws and has the room to improve on offense. Sixers have built defensive juggernaut of a team, and Thibel will add to that. The other guy was a, the other guy was a great scorer in college, but will probably start in the G League. Right, so we probably won't see a lot of Mariel Shayuk, or I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. But uh, Thibel will be a great contributor off the bench. I love the fact he can defend one through four, um, and I think the Philadelphia 76ers got a steal at 20 at that. All right, let's move ahead. Let's talk some free agency. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run down uh, what happened with all their team with all their players from last year and who they added. They lost my guy JJ Redick. All right, that was a little heartbreaking. You know, he went to the Pelicans, two years, 26 and a half mil. I'm not going to lie. This one hurt a little bit. I mean, it hurts me. I know. It hurts everybody. I think the yeah. Philadelphia 76ers nation should collectively uh, be saddened by the loss of their guy, JJ. But I don't know what's worse. The hurt, like, mentally and or physically for the team. Because mentally, like, I like JJ Redick. He's a veteran and all. He just... He, I like the player. I don't know why. But also, like, that was a veteran. He was a good shooter. And they, they need shooters. So, it it is hard losing a veteran shooter like J.J. Redick. So we'll see how that impacts him. But I think that's going to be one of the, the main losses of the season. I would agree. They, they really miss his knockdown three-point shooting. Um, but they re-signed Tobias Harris for five years, 180 mil. It seems a little much. All right, I'm not going to lie. That uh, 180 for five for Harris, who didn't have a great second half last year. They gave up a lot, so maybe that had to do something with uh, them bringing him back. Yeah, and that's what I was wondering, if, if you thought that that was a bit of a big contract for him but maybe maybe he'll step up to it that's usually not the case when guys get big contracts like that but i, I feel like they kind of had to do it they needed him especially with the loss of jimmy or uh yeah jimmy butler yeah so and we'll then see. they re-sign mike scott ak you know you know what his nickname is it's the it's the three general manager that's what i found out for uh, two years just under 10 mil uh, he's great from three. He's much needed depth. He can play the three and the four. Loves the, like the Philly community really embraced Mike Scott. So I'm really happy they got him. And two for 10 doesn't seem that bad for a guy that can do, uh, can do a lot off the bench for him. Um, all right. And then next, all right, here's where we get a little, uh, controversial. They didn't, they signed and then traded Jimmy Butler to the Miami Heat for shooting guard, Josh Richardson. I thought Jimmy Butler was one of the guys that wanted to go back to Philly, but, uh, I mean, he went down the stretch. He was their most clutch performer, especially in the playoffs, but they decided to get younger and a hell of a lot cheaper in Josh Richardson. From all accounts, Josh Richardson's an okay shooter. He's not, not JJ, but it's pretty good. Yeah. See the Jimmy Butler, that's a tough one because he can be stressful in locker rooms. We've seen that, especially with, uh, in Minnesota. Um, everyone said that that's what Minnesota needed was that, that presence, that dog that he brings with him. And I wonder if that hurt the, uh, the Philadelphia locker room at all it didn't seem to but the defendant like his defending is what I think they're going to miss the most so that's where I think they're going to really lack but I do think it was a good idea to go a little cheaper especially when you're going to give a massive contract to Ben yeah and then you're also like you've got to pay guys so I think it was smart to move on from him little, little fun fact Josh Richardson now becomes the shortest guy on the floor he's I think he's 6'6 six, six. every other uh, starter is huge I mean their point guard yeah. is like 6'10 so 
Um, Maybe they're following Milwaukee's uh, method of just being extremely long. Exactly. A lot of guys, a lot of, uh, lot of length, or length, as it's uh, sometimes referred to. Last up, we got Al Horford. Center Al Horford. The Sixers poached him from the, from the Celtics. They got him for four years, 109 mil. Look, for years, Al Horford was the Sixers' stopper. Anytime the Sixers and the Celtics would play, Al Horford would own and be down low. It was just insane. So the fact that they brought him on so he can no longer hurt them anymore, I mean, that alone just makes the deal worthwhile, I think. Oh, I, I agree. I think that is one of the biggest reasons they signed him is just to get him out of Boston. I mean, he, he is a great player. Don't get me wrong. But I think not having to go against him and having him on your side is going to be a, a massive help. That now their lineup, I think I think they're going to play Horford at the four and beat at the five. Um, so basically, you're running two centers out there. Uh, but, you know, uh, Embiid is a little injury prone. So if Embiid ever goes down, you have like an awesome starting caliber center who a guy can just slide right in there. Yep, so I agree. I mean, he's 33, so he's on the downslope of his career. They got him until he's like 37. Uh, but you so- can also balance, balance rest with him. You can rest Al Horford, you can rest Joel Embiid and have them switch back and forth. And then you can also have them both play on the floor at the same time as you see in the starting lineup we have right here. Mm-hmm. So I think it is a good move. All right, let, let's get your overall sense of the moves they they made in free agency. I mean, they completely overhauled their roster, um, and they, I think they completely changed the way they play basketball. Do you think it's going to pay off for them? <sighs> That's a tough one, and to me, it, it honestly rests on Ben Simmons. Uh, if if he can, if he can get a shot, I think that they can they can become a great team. As soon as Ben Simmons gets a three point shot, I think it's all over, and I think they'll be the best team in the East. Even a well, mid range. Give me a mid range. Yeah. But I mean, now you have a, a massive team. You have Al Horford and Joel Embiid that are going to be right in the paint, and then Ben Simmons is going to try and get into the paint too. I just I don't see that working. Okay, uh, so let's run down their their projected starting five really quick. We got their point guard Ben Simmons, shooting guard Josh Richardson, small forward Tobias Harris, power forward Al Horford, and center Joel Embiid. Uh, strengths weaknesses strengths defense. I mean, just you, you got some dogs out there. You guys got Embiid and Horford down low. I mean, that's going to be a game changer. They're, they're not going to let anybody in the paint. They got length. They got switchability. Uh, I think those are all big, big strengths for this team. Um, and then weaknesses, three-point shooting. I'm just going to say it. I mean, you, yeah. li- you only have two guys that are like, – it's going to be Richardson and it's going to be Harris that are going to be relied upon to shoot the three. How that works out? You know that's to be seen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I agree. I strengths. I, yeah, there's no way I, can, I can't argue any of that. That's all perfect and weakness. They just need to do something about three. Like the depth, that's fine. You can get by without having that much depth, especially once you get to like the postseason. That's not as big of a deal because you don't play as many players. But the three point shooting, they are going to need that, especially in today's league. Right. So maybe they're gonna they're gonna kick it old school though. They're just gonna bang it down low. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe they change the league back. This could be the start of yeah, <laughs> the big man movement. Uh, all yeah. right, let's get some season predictions. All right, I'm gonna go first. They're not gonna finish lower than second in the Eastern Conference. They're either gonna be one or two. That's my prediction, and they're gonna get to their first NBA Finals since 2001. All right, I don't think they're gonna do that well at all this year. I feel like Joel Embiid's gonna get hurt, and then I think they're gonna go downhill pretty hard unless Ben Simmons can get a shot. If Ben Simmons can come up with some sort of shot mid-range or anything, then I think you're right. They will be in the NBA Finals because they don't really have anyone to go through in the East, or well, at least not with KD out. So I'm gonna go a little bit more uh, cynical and say that they're gonna be a lower seed, like third or lower. Wow. All Bar. right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the first of our NBA preview videos on the, this first one about the 76ers. Uh, so if you like this video, drop us a like or a comment. Yeah, make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time.